Hi, everyone. My name is Errol Weiss, and I'm the Chief Security Officer with the Health Information Sharing and Analysis Center for Health ISAC. And in conjunction with the Cybersecurity Awareness Month, I want to share with you a few tips and tricks that you can use to, st to stay safe online. I know I get asked very often from friends and family about what could they do to make sure that they don't become a victim when they are doing things online. So as I said, two things that you need to remember. The first thing is protect your email. It is so important to secure and tighten down your email. Why is that? Well, everything, password resets, communications from businesses that you've got a relationship with are probably all going to your email today. So we wanna make sure that the bad guys cannot take advantage of that create and make a victim out of you by taking over your email. So what's the best way to do that? Well, it's something that's called multi-factor authentication. And it sounds really technical and maybe it sounds scary to some of you, but I'm gonna make it simple. And I hope that you will be able to turn this on and take advantage of it by the time I get done with this talk today. Um, we also talk about thinking before you click. Don't get pressured by an email that looks like it may have come from a bank or other business that you have to take some immediate action in order to prevent a fraud or to prevent your account from being locked out. Um, take your time, think about what the email is trying to convey to you. And if you have a question, pick up the phone and you initiate the call. And if it sounds too good to be true, well, it probably is. Especially, have you ever gotten an email that says you're the winner of a lottery? Uh, in particular, if you didn't enter that lottery, you probably didn't win it. The second item that I have here, and there's a big long list on this screen here, it's all about keeping your software up to date. There's a few tips in there about how to keep your laptop or your desktop up to date, or your Apple iPhone, or maybe your Android phone up to date. Um, I try to do this maybe once a month or so. Many of the systems today are automated, so you really don't need to do anything but um, you may wanna check occasionally by manually going through that process and checking for updates. Again, something good to think about. So, so what is multi-factor authentication? Again, I know it sounded a little scary, maybe a little technical, but it's very simple. In addition to normally using your username or password as you would today to log into many websites, it's the something you know, which is the username and password, and then something you have, the proof that's shown on the slide here. And that could be a text message or maybe an application that's on your phone that provides you with a certain value that you also have to enter into the system or click something on your cell phone. Once you enter that in, boom, success, you logged in, voila, and you're on. There's a way to do this so that you only have to do it the first time you log into a site from a new device. And that's what I would encourage you to take advantage of. It may also look like this here as well, where that middle, um, piece of verification data. Not only might it be something that's on your phone, but maybe it's a fingerprint or maybe it's a piece of facial recognition. But these are ways that you can really secure your accounts, especially your email, as I had mentioned before, and prevent other people, especially the bad guys, from getting into your account without authorization. These are a bunch of sites that I've looked at here recently that, that allow you to take advantage of multi-factor authentication. There's a few here that I list, but in general, your financial institution, your bank, many online retailers support this today as well. Look at their websites, find out how to turn multi-factor authentication on and take advantage of it to help protect you and your account. There are a few that I've listed on the screen here. Again, I just wanna highlight a few emails that are on there like Gmail, Outlook, Yahoo. They all enable two-factor authentication. I checked these links just before I started recording this session and they all work, so I know they're valid. The other thing I would suggest, again, protecting yourself is like setting up a good defense. Think defensively about the things that I mentioned before. So in the spirit of defense, um, there's some really neat services out here from the United States Postal Service, for example, and you can even see what mail is coming your way with a new service that they, that they call informed delivery. I use it myself. Maybe you don't wanna use it, doesn't matter. Sign up for it before somebody else does on your behalf. The same thing with the Social Security Administration. 
your annual statements that you may be getting in the mail today are all available online. Sign up for it online, whether you intend to use it or not, but get it online, get that account established, again, before somebody else does it for you and you become a victim of identity theft. I'm gonna leave this slide up here just for a moment and all of those links and all of this information again is available on the Health ISAC website. Health ISAC is proud to support these efforts in cooperation with Cybersecurity Awareness Month. I hope you've learned a couple of things, a couple of tips and tricks that I subscribe to myself. Protect your email, use multi-factor authentication. It's easy, sign up for it now.